You know it must be a day ending, and why? Because Harry and Megan are right back in front of the cameras. <laughs> Did you catch that? No one asked for Megan. Because, see, she's only a legend in her own mind. Everybody was like, where's Harry? Harry? Harry. Well, welcome to the Great Colombian Coin Chase, another fake royal tour that comes just in time to cover up the fact that Megan was snubbed. Netflix delayed her show till 2025. Staff quit. Staff squealed. The king has convened a royal summit to talk about the couple's titles. Harry told the UK to get bent. And then you had Walmart Wallace used a CBS interview to milk sympathy clicks from grieving parents, all while throwing shade at the royal family. I haven't really scraped the surface on my experience. But I do think that I would never want someone else to feel that way. And I would never want someone else to be making those sort of plans. And I would never want someone else to not be believed. Spotify was wrong. The Megans, they're not grifters. They're parasites hopping from host to host. Until one day, the only thing left to drain will be each other's egos. What's going on, everybody? You know that old saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same? Well, who better to prove it than Meghan and Harry? I don't think there's anybody else in the world that is better suited and placed to be able to see this through than myself. But he fears negative tabloid narratives endanger him and his family. Like enough, enough of the pain, enough of the, the suffering. I think you need therapy. Harry refuses to attend his uncle's funeral in the UK out of security fears. Yet those fears fly right out the window the very moment that the overgrown man baby and his grouchy nanny decide to kick off the next leg of their Montecito hillbilly holiday tour. And of all places, Colombia. Paparazzi still harassing. Colombia, that sunny land of drug lords, daily crime, gangs, guerrillas, kidnappings, and a country where the average monthly wage for people is around $800 after taxes. What a perfect vacation spot for Megan to show off her online Spanish classes and to parade her $80,000 wardrobe every single day. To top that off, you had the vice president of Colombia, Francia Marquez, welcome the pair of posers. Quiero comunicarles que Colombia es anfitrión recibiremos al príncipe Harry y Meghan vi la serie de Netflix esta es una mujer que merece venir a nuestro país será un fortalecimiento a tantas mujeres en el mundo <laughs> The best translation for what she said was Colombia's VP simply drank the Kool-Aid. She said she was so moved by watching Megan's six-hour Netflix wine thon that she invited the pair of posers to the nation. But more than that, she then decided to jump on the bandwagon and attack the royal family. And that right there, folks, is exactly why so many people can't stand Megan and Harry. After Oprah, Netflix, Spare, and a zillion interviews, the couple swore to the heavens that they were done talking about the royal family. They had moved on, and they would move forward under their own steam and their own merit. But then here we are. Surprise, surprise. Once again, a couple of walking, talking, hungry ego alerts are clapping like trained seals, standing shoulder to shoulder with a backup leader of a crime-ridden nation who hates their families as much as they do. I mean, the hypocrisy is so thick, you can almost hear it echo off the Andes. Here's the good news. Megan might have actually finally found her one true soulmate. VP Francia Marquez takes a Black Hawk helicopter to work every single day at a cool cost of $12,000 an hour. You know, that's a woman after Megan's own heart. Who knows? Maybe the Duchess of Dog Biscuits will miraculously discover that she's actually 1.6% Colombian and will decide to return to the nation and stay forever. Because at this point, it, it just makes sense. Everywhere else the Montecito merchandisers have lived, no one takes them seriously. Not in the UK, not Canada, and most definitely not in the USA. That's why now they're forced to find rented love on foreign shores. Because at the end of the day, life is just hard being a Megan. 
for Meghan Markle. I mean, no one understands how hard it is for her to be an unmade millionaire and live in a mansion in Montecito and fly everywhere by private jet. The little people have no understanding. They're just so busy, kind of desperately trying to fight to stay alive or feed their own children. They can't comprehend how hard it is for Meghan now that she's married to Harry. And, you know, they've always been looking for their privacy. And the only way they could find that privacy was to film six one-hour documentaries inside their own home, featuring their most personal moments so that they could show people just how hard they were trying to find that privacy. And if it wasn't for the cameras capturing Meghan crying, we'd never have known she was so upset. There's no other way to say it. Harry and Meghan's brand image is in the toilet. That's the whole entire reason for their South American Ego Express expedition, was to turn the page, to write a new chapter for the California couple called Meghan and Harry are serious people. Serious people who talk about serious things for a serious world. AI is scary. And I, think, um, and I think a lot of people are scared and uncertain. And I think one of the solutions to that is education and awareness, because it's becoming, <clears throat> it's becoming harder and harder to stem the flow from the source. And therefore, really, it comes down to all of us to be able to spot the true from the fake. When I actually first saw that clip, I thought, this has got to be a deep fake or someone's having a laugh because we're talking about Harry here, who's currently a fake royal married to a fake wife with fake hair and fake teeth, who talks nonstop about her fake love, how it can heal the world, all while ghosting her one father, who the planet has had to come together with a GoFundMe page to support his health care costs and throw him a birthday bash for his 80th. That Megan and that Harry a pampered prince who didn't have the grades to get even into a basic university. And he's going to try to dress down Elon Musk and preach to us about the dangers of artificial intelligence. That's rich. But it's really no different than what happened a little while ago when they went to CBS News and launched a parents network for those who had lost children to cyberbullying. Now, that cyberbullying, that's a noble cause by itself. But if you watch that CBS News interview, what you're going to discover is out of nine minutes and 14 seconds, the majority of it, about seven minutes and 40 seconds or so, was spent as a promotional for the pair of posers. The rest of the time, about a minute and 15 seconds, was left for the grieving parents. And the very first thing that Megan did was to be herself. Our kids are young. They're three and five. They're amazing. But all you want to do as parents is protect them. And so as we can see what's happening in the online space, we know that there's a lot of work to be done there, and we're just happy to be able to be a part of. Who in their right mind would talk about their amazing kids in the company of parents who just lost their own? I mean, seriously. Mr. and Mrs. Hasbin never was. The absentee parents know more about making paparazzi appointments and slinging mud at the royal family for money than they know anything about real societal issues. But see, that's the new course that they've charted. Again, to talk about serious things, to rebrand their image as serious people. Well, let's get real. These are the Megans we're talking about. They have the mental capacity of a common houseplant. And say what you will about houseplants, at least they grow when you water them. And it's a lesson over the weekend that Columbia learned how a bully tried monetize being a bully while telling others not to bully her, all while playing a victim. My husband and I founded the Artful Foundation and had our own lived experience, which a lot of you may have witnessed in terms of what online harms can look like. Maybe your grandmother used to say it to you also. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. But what's happened? There are several conversations There's a about conversation it. with you? With Harry. About how dark your baby is going to be? Potentially, and what that would mean or look like. The hand and the claw simply have no shame. See, they spent years abusing Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip when they were alive, even when they were battling ill health. And then they took that same show on the road to abuse the royal family nonstop and abuse anyone and everyone who stood in their way. The press was simply too cowardly to hold their feet to the fire. But see, the universe doesn't have that kind of a problem. For every choice, there's a consequence. And if not, you know at minimum there's a comedian who's going to step up and roast them back into reality. Full disclosure, I, I, I do think Harry's a wanker, but... Um, well, you know. he seems to be. Mm. And it seems like uh, that lady is uh, a temptress. She's a siren. She's Ooh, lured she's him into the rocks. Whoa. 
Things aren't looking too good for the California couple and their rescue chickens. Netflix just joined Lemonada Media in delaying Megan's cooking show, just like the podcast, till 2025, which just happens to coincide with Arts World's chief of staff, Josh Kettler, quitting the couple after working for them for only three months. That makes him staff member number 18 to exit stage left since 2018. And that's right on the heels of chief of staff of the Invictus Games, Dominic Reed, who quit in July working for Harry. Why? Because he was incensed, furious at the fact that the man baby would abuse a mother's memory of her son and accept the Pat Tillman Award at the ESPYs. Pat Tillman, as we all know, was a man who gave up his life for his country, a true hero who Harry couldn't fill his shoes on his best day. But the hits keep coming. Harry last month held an interview with ITV News, and the ratings are in. That show where Harry was peddling his one claim to fame about being Princess Diana's son sank to the bottom of the ratings. A show, a series on airplane safety, beat Harry talking about himself. And then Megan was snubbed in the Hamptons at a business summit for women because all the A-list celebrities and real stars like Gwyneth Paltrow refused to take a single photo with her. They didn't want to sink their careers. And right now, King Charles has convened a royal summit with a family to discuss what to do with a Montecito merchandiser's title. Are they going to form a plan to take him away? We can only hope so. But things are looking up because the great news is Prince William and Princess Catherine just stepped up to show us what true nobility is like. They wrote a letter to a local pizza seller who the community loved very much and passed away. That note was read at the gentleman's funeral. So I want to read you a piece of that exactly as Prince William wrote it because he doesn't call his beloved wife by her titles. Dear Tracy, I wanted to write to express how terribly sorry Catherine and I were to hear the very sad news about your husband, Pete, and to send you our deepest sympathies. We can only begin to imagine what an immense hole he will leave in your life. And my heart goes out to you and your family. I appreciate that this letter alone can be of little comfort under such circumstance. But I did want you to know just how much you and your family are in our thoughts at such a difficult time. With my deepest condolences. That is a beautiful letter. It is exactly what you would expect from a true prince and princess. 100% heart, 100% soul, and 100% devotion to their people. Those are role models to look up to. Now, you know, it's been a while since I put out a video. I missed y'all, but I'm back. We've been putting together here at Georgia Giant Slayer a couple of surprises for you. I had started a streaming show called Slayer Nation back in January. It's still on every Sunday at 2 p.m., 8 p.m. UK time. But now I'm starting to solo stream every Wednesday at the very same time, where we're going to be talking about the latest culture and political news. But starting this Thursday is the premiere of a Harry and Meghan mega stream. We're going to break down the latest about Walmart Wallace and her doormat. So I hope to see you there. You better show up. If you enjoyed this video and found value in it, hit subscribe, smash the like button, share your thoughts in the comments down below about Mr. and Mrs. Has Been Never Was. What's their next trip going to be? First it was Jamaica, Nigeria, now Colombia. Are they going to Australia or Antarctica next? And share this video with everyone you know. To win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to remember is we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward.